CASPA is a solution dedicated to peer-to-peer -peer payments. However, it doesn't have any smart contract capability. While it's on the roadmap, development hasn't been initiated. Today, their focus is on migrating the network from Go to Rust nodes and achieving 10 blocks per second. CASPA is transforming digital transactions with high-speed efficiency and robust security. But what really goes on behind the scenes? And how do KRC20 tokens fit in? Let's dive in and discover the magic of CASPA and KRC20. Gasplex, a project from KEF, which stands for Caspa Ecosystem Foundation, a separate entity from the Caspa core team, is introducing a new standard called KRC20 as a token protocol, similar to what BRC20 provides for Bitcoin. Both KRC20 and BRC20 do not require any specific changes in the network nodes. KRC20 works by inserting data into the transaction payload and using a different type of node called an indexer to track all the KRC20 tokens and operations. While KRC20 introduces more advanced scripting capabilities than BRC20, it does not reach the level of complexity and flexibility of ERC20 smart contracts. The commit reveal scheme allows for programmable behavior, making KRC20 more than just a simple token standard, but it still lacks the full Turing complete functionality of Ethereum's smart contract environment. Is that better? Well, it depends. Adding more complexity to the scripting mechanism to make them Turing complete makes ERC20 better for advanced development of services, integrating decentralized apps, or giving permissions to third parties to manage your tokens on your behalf, stake, liquidity pools. However, this comes with the cost of adding more complexity to the nodes in the network, making them more vulnerable to bugs and attacks, less efficient, requiring more compute resources, which affects the decentralization of the network and easier to get congested due to the complexity of computing complex uh, scripting structures inside every transaction. In contrast, KRC20 allows CASPA to stay focused on security, simplicity, scale, and being a digital currency. Its scripting language is intentionally limited to prevent complexity and maintain robustness. Next, We'll explore how CASPA manages uh, transactions from wallet to wallet. Then we'll dive deep into how KRC20 tokens work within this process. What crypto wallet users see from their wallet is just a simple, simple operation of transferring CASPA from one wallet to another. But behind the scenes, it's much more complex. This complexity ensures high transaction speeds and volumes without sacrificing security or decentralization. Let's dive into this process in detail next. First, you send a transaction from your wallet to uh, the CASPA network. Second, the transaction arrives at a rusty CASPA node, which checks if it's valid and hasn't been spent before. The node also syncs this transaction with other nodes in the network to ensure consistency. Third, if valid, the transaction is added to the node's mempool, a waiting area for transactions. Fourth, the rusty CASPA node shares transactions from its mempool with a mining pool. Fifth, the mining pool adds these transactions to its own mempool and distributes them to connected miners. Sixth, miners pick transactions from the mining pool's mempool and work on creating new blocks by solving a complex puzzle. Proof of work. Seventh, once a miner solves the puzzle, a new block containing the transaction is created and sent back to the mining pool. Eighth, the mining pool sends the block to the rusty Caspa node, which uh, checks the block for correctness. Ninth, the valid block is added to the blockchain and propagated across the network. Tenth, your wallet sees the transaction confirmed in the new block, updating your balance. Now, when you transfer your KRC20 tokens between wallets that support this new standard, you see a simple operation of moving tokens from one wallet to another. However, KRC20 adds basic scripting similar to BRC20 to the payload of the transactions to make this work. It also uses indexers to validate these transactions and keep track of wallet balances. First, you create a transaction to transfer KRC20 tokens from your wallet, and your wallet signs the transaction, adding the KRC20 payload with token transfer details. Second, the transaction is sent to a rusty CASPA node, which validates and adds it to its uh, mempool. Third, the rusty CASPA node shares the transaction with the mining pool, which adds it to its own mempool. Fourth, miners 
pick up the transaction from the mining pool's mempool and start solving a complex puzzle, proof of work, to create a new block. Fifth, once a miner solves the puzzle, the new block containing your transaction is created and sent back to the mining pool. Sixth, the mining pool sends the block to the Rusty Caspa node, which uh, checks the block for correctness and then propagates it across the network. Seventh, the block is added to the blockchain and your transaction is confirmed. Eight, a KRC20 indexer validates the transaction and updates the token balances in the wallet, ensuring the correct transfer of KRC20 tokens. This process ensures that your KRC20 token transfer is secure, validated, and accurately recorded on the Caspa network. In conclusion, while KRC20 brings more advanced capabilities to the Caspa network, it maintains a focus on security and simplicity. This balance allows uh, Caspa to handle high transaction speeds and volumes without compromising on decentralization. Stay tuned for our next videos, where we'll discuss the challenges faced during the beta launch and the efforts underway to resolve them. We'll also explore how a marketplace for KRC20 tokens will work. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter to keep up with the latest developments on all these exciting topics.